I'm Shaza and this is Hooked on Books and today I'm going to be talking about what I've been reading, what I'm going to be reading, what I am reading for the Irish Readathon. So there are, why are my arms moving around so much? So there are several challenges which I should probably look up because I can't fucking remember what they are. Balls. Um, so there are five prompts for the Irish Readathon, some of which I'm kind of crossing over a little bit. So the first one is to read a book by an Irish female writer and another prompt is to read an Irish book that isn't a novel. So I'm kind of crossing those together and I'm going to read, or I have read, what am I talking about? Postcard stories. So this is stories by Jan Carson who is a, a Northern Irish writer and I picked this up whenever I was home in Northern Ireland in a bookshop and this is a selection of kind of like short little snapshot stories that you can fit onto a postcard, largely set um, and in relation to places in Northern Ireland. Um, so there's a whole range of stories in here, some quite quirky, some quite funny, um, some quite sad, um, but yeah, I really quite enjoyed the collection and I kind of like the, the sort of nice sort of the feeling of having bought this at home and I, I remember reading this kind of on the train when I was going into Belfast, that kind of thing, and find them very easy to get into. Um, I guess the only criticism is they're really short so then it's quite hard to kind of like connect with every single one um, and I think if you're reading them on a train journey for instance it doesn't necessarily work that well but I still kind of have a sort of nice feeling about having done that. Um, I feel like instead that you, you would maybe read one or two uh, and then pick up something else but I did really enjoy the collection and there's a few illustrations in here which I quite liked as well and I, I quite enjoy the cover as well and I just like that I was reading something from someone who is from where I'm from. <laughs> give you an example of the, the, the kind of style in here. I'm going to read one of the postcard stories in here. So this one. Week 21, May 27th, 2015, Belmont Road, East Belfast. The Wilsons could not afford more than one baby, nor did they believe in only children. It's cruel, said Mrs Wilson, bringing up a child without another child for company. When their baby was old enough to sit up, they placed him in a small room mirrored on all four sides. Look at all the mirror babies, they said. So many friends to play with. They took great comfort in the way their baby talked to his reflection as if the children in the mirror were real. Later, when he was 16 or 17 and the mirror room had been demolished to make way for a home office, the boy had vague memories of siblings. He presumed them, all but himself, dead and did not ask. But there was a sadness inside him like a two-sided mirror. So that's just an example of one of the stories. That one in particular wasn't particularly heavy in its sort of uh, depiction of Ireland or Northern Ireland, um, but I quite enjoyed the mix in here. Um, I'd say that they're not all that memorable, but I really enjoy the collection and it's a book that I'm kind of glad that I own. And I feel like this one really fits the prompt of to read a book that is a female author and it also fits the prompt of to read a book that is not a novel because this is a collection of short stories. One of the prompts is to read a book that is older than you are and the book that I chose to read was The Butcher Boy by Patrick McCabe and this is merely two months older than I am which was published in April 1992 which was a good year and this has also been turned into a film and I love the book, love the film, really fucking disturbing. Um, it's basically about this child who he's a little bit of a wee shit to be honest and gets into all sorts of trouble um, but he's got kind of a tough family life, he's got a father who's an alcoholic who beats his mother so he's got this sort of tough stuff going on at home uh, and he gets into all sorts of trouble and he's got this real sort of imagination and it was kind of, I love that kind of getting in the, the, the sort of imagination side of things and how disturbing and far the imagination can go and how his perceptions were kind of altered by this uh, imagination and just, it just went to a really deeply disturbing and dark place um, but I just really enjoyed reading about this. I, I love the kind of sort of Irish village life. Um, I just felt really connected to it and just found it an absolute joy to read and uh, as it got darker and darker I also enjoyed that element of it but it, it you know really was quite disturbing. Um, but yeah this was a great book and I'm really glad that I read it. I believe this was also shortlisted for the Booker um, or longlisted I'm not sure um, back in the day um, but yeah this was great. Really really enjoyed it. Another one of the prompts is to read a book by one of the host's favourite authors. So that's um, Sarah Rhys Brennan, Louise O'Neill and Marianne Keyes. Um, 
I kind of just went with the one that I just so happened to have a book on my shelf, which is Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill. Um, this is kind of one of those books that fits into young adult, but also adult. I feel like it's kind of on the cusp. And it's one that I've had for a few years, um, but haven't picked up yet. And I still haven't read it, but this is one that I'm hoping to pick up before the month is out. Um, whether or not I will, we'll, we'll see. All I really know about this is that someone's told me that it will probably make me angry. Um, I know that it's about women. Um, I know that it's probably got an element of feminism in there, possibly, could be wrong, but I, I feel like it's it's making a point about equality or misogyny or something along those lines. That's all I really know about it. Um, so I'm probably just going to dive into it without reading too much on the background. Um, I'm not sure why I haven't picked it up yet, but I don't tend to read any YA and this is potentially the new book that I have on my shelf that actually is YA. Uh, the old one kind of appeals to me, but then I always kind of hesitate a little bit. Um, but I'll be interested to see what that's like based on the fact that for me, working in a bookshop, I would tend to put this in the adult section or the YA section. I kind of like flip between the two. Um, but it'd be interesting to see what I think after having read it. I'd love to know what you think of this, if you've read it. Um, encourage me, discourage me, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to fit my prompt of reading one of the host's favourite authors. Um, so that's that one. The final prompt is to read a book with green in the cover. I'm not really bothering with that one. Um, you know, who knows, I might find something and pick it up, but I'm not really bothered. Well, actually, technically, the audiobook that I'm uh, listening to has green on the cover, so that works. And it also fits into the prompt of to read a book that's not a novel. And that is A Short History of Ireland um, by Dr. Jonathan Barden. It was broadcast on the radio and that can be quite frustrating because it has these like radio breaks and it continuously tells me that you're listening to A Short History of Ireland in 240 episodes. And I'm like, literally every five minutes. If I remember anything from this book, it's going to be, you're listening to your History of Ireland in 240 episodes. But despite that, I do actually really like it. It's like these little snapshots of information across um, the history of Ireland. Um, it, it, I think it's about 22 hours long, so it's quite quite a big one, but it's, it's really well broken down and it's really, really well um, produced as well. It's got a range of people that speak on it. It's got like musical background noise. Um, so it really has this sort of atmospheric feel to it. Um, so that, and there's all sorts of information in there, stuff that I knew, stuff that I didn't know. Um, but I just, I quite like listening to it. Um, when I do listen to audiobooks, I don't 100% take them in. So having these little snapshots um, is quite useful for me so then I don't necessarily feel like I'm missing much if I kind of zone out for a second. Um, but yeah it, it's a really really good audiobook as well and it's another one that I'm reading for the readathon. So those are all the books that I am reading, have read, planning on reading for the Irish readathon. Who knows I may throw in something else? Probably not because there's 21 million readathons that I want to get involved in. Why are they all in March? Tell me this, why are they all in March? And also the Man Booker International Prize has just been announced as well so I, yeah. I love that, so I want to read those. Ah, <sighs> stress. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you again in my next video. Also, if you're taking part in the Irish Readathon, or if you've got any thoughts on Irish books, or any of the books that I mentioned, do let me know. And um, thank you, and goodbye.